neo classical school basically they continued the traditions of the classical school itself and they provided certain categories of offenders uh, uh, kindly remember again in the shortcomings we mentioned that they treated everyone equally as in punishment should be provided for all offenders equally when it came to neoclassicals even though they accepted the idea of free will and you know providing punishment as deterrence and all of those aspects they tried to uh, categorize offenders in different ways as in minors idiots insane or incompetent incompetent people had to be treated treated leniently so according to neoclassical the uh, types of offenders the categories of offenders as i mentioned now they had to be treated differently because uh, they did not have the concept of uh, what they were doing that concept of free will could not be uh, actually um, try to i mean you can't say that people who are minor or people who are insane had this concept of free will they are not able to uh, look into what are the gains and pain the process of thought process would not be there so therefore they had to be treated leniently and um, in matters of punishment irrespective of the similarity of their act because these persons were incapable they had to be uh, treated differently uh, people like minors insane people they do not know what is right or wrong okay so therefore while providing punishment a uh, various category of offenders need to be identified and punishment should be provided to them accordingly so the concept of um, uh, insane or uh, people who are mentally deprived uh, providing punishment to them in a less severe way that came out during the new classical school so our present law which states that person who is insane should not be provided with punishment rather they should be sent to a uh, mental asylum is based upon this school of thought and also they try to state that certain situation or mental disorders deprived a person of his normal capacity to control his conduct or behavior okay so neoclassicals mainly looked into providing punishment by categorizing people according to their uh, uh, capacity to control their behavior and uh, according to them all criminals whether if they are responsible for their act or whether they are responsible for their act irresponsible would be insane people or you know minor children etc if they are um, if they commit a crime be it if they are responsible for the act or irresponsible for the act they must be kept segregated from the society okay they should not be able to mingle with the other people of society but rather they should be uh, kept segregated in different correctional institutions okay and uh, the concept of prison therefore had a proper definition because of this neo classical school uh, there other thoughts like providing um, parole probation uh, open air camps which is equivalent to our open prisons now uh, reformatory activities in prisons all of these ideas where which we presently see in uh, our punishment systems or in our prisons were basically the ideologies provided by the new classes okay so they focused into how each people each offender should be treated and uh, how they could be deterred from crime providing equal punishment would not help in deterrence rather trying to identify the category of offenders and providing them with the relevant type of correctional uh, institution or providing them with proper punishment would help in deterrence of crime so that comes to the end of uh, neo classicals okay so what we have looked into now is pre classical classical and neo classical so we have an idea as to how uh, they try to define why a person commits crime okay and what punishment should be provided or how should punishment change so the concept of crime from religion 
to an individual is how uh, these schools of thought uh, schools of thought helped us in understanding moving on to a more scientific uh, knowledge or more scientific objectivity that was provided is in the positivist school or the italian school now whatever theories are there in terminology or whatever new theories are coming up all of these are because of the um, or all of those theories have a baseline from the italian school okay so this is one of the most important theories that are still being looked into the causation of crime uh, so mostly if you ask a criminologist which theory uh, would you tell or which theory would you recommend in relation to causation of crime the base theory would always be italian school or the positivist school so the scientific objectivity for measurement and quantification of criminal behavior was provided by the italian school okay they tried to um, uh, look at criminal behavior uh, by discovering experts from three main uh, disciplines or three main ideologies as such one is biological second is psychological and social they tried to define crime using these three aspects biological psychological and social aspects so the main exponents of prom, uh, proponents of this school were cicer lombroso rafael garafello and enrico ferri we will look into each of their ideologies and how they have provided uh, their ideas to the uh, so called italian school of criminology so lombroso is the most uh, important person in the field of criminology and he was the one who provided the idea that the personality of offenders could be measured using physical terms or their physical body okay so he was the first one to employ scientific methods in explaining criminal behavior and thus he shifted the emphasis of uh, Uh, a particular crime from a crime to criminal usually in the classical school and in the pre classical school the focus was more on to the crime the act committed rather than the offender so because of lombroso's concept the idea of looking into uh, rather the act it was focused more on to the offender the criminal as such so according to him criminals were physically inferior in the standard of growth and therefore they developed a tendency for inferior acts okay so usually they were physically inferior and therefore they tend to do inferior acts which is crime criminals are less sensitive to pain and therefore they had little regard for the suffering of others so according to him a person who commits a crime is less sensitive to pain and that's why he commits this particular act he uh try to classify criminals into three main categories first one is the call it's called as hereditary criminals or atavists okay the concept of atavism that is you tend to uh, commit crime because you have hereditarily uh, genetically got it is what uh, lombroso stated that's the first the second is insane criminals and the third is criminoids these are the three main categories of classified criminals so as i mentioned earlier hereditary criminals or atavists according to uh, lombroso was that a person is born a criminal okay so he could not refrain from committing crime because he is born a criminal uh, according to him for atavist environment does not play any role the environment had no relevance whatsoever if a person commits crime he commits a crime because he is born as a criminal so according to him a criminal is both mentally as well as physically inferior so lombroso was the first to use the physical characteristics as indicators of criminality so according to him uh, there are a lot of physical abnormalities he identified at least 16 physical abnormalities of a criminal uh, the peculiar size of the size and shape of the head or the size and shape of and person's eye enlarged jaw uh, enlarged cheekbones fleshy lips abnormal teeth 
long and flat chin, retreating forehead, dark skin, twisted nose, etc., etc. So, according to him, people who had such physical abnormalities were considered to be uh, people who would commit crime or who have already committed crime. So, they were termed as criminals. So, his theory of atavism was revised in 1906 and he held that only one third of the criminals were born criminals and not all the criminals. Earlier, before 1906, when his theory of atavism came up, he stated that all of the criminals who committed crime were born criminals. But he again revised his theory uh, with his scientific knowledge and stated that only one third of the criminals were born criminals and not all of the criminals. The second category was insane criminals, wherein he stated that um, insane criminals are those he rest who restored to criminality on account of their certain mental uh, deprivation or disorder. The third category was criminoids. Uh, these are types of criminals who were uh, who had a tendency to commit crime in order to overcome their inferiority in order to meet their needs of survival. So that the best example would be if a person is from a very low economic background, if he is not able to, uh, you know, get himself food, water, shelter, which is needed for survival, he would commit crime in order to fulfill his basic needs. Okay, so these are the three main types, the concept of born criminal or atavism, second is insane criminals and third is criminoids. These are the classifications provided by Lombroso. The second person is Enrico Ferri. Uh, he challenged the view, Lombrosian view of criminality and he stated that factors such as emotional reaction, uh, geographical conditions, social infirmity, all of these also play a, a vital role in determining criminal tendencies in men. When I started talking about Italian school or the positive school, I had stated that they looked into three main aspects. One is biological, second is psychological and third is social. So uh, already the biological related concepts, the physical characteristics, all we have already covered. Now we are looking into more of psychological as well as social factors. So. Enrico Ferri is called as the founder of criminal sociology, wherein he tried to look at how a person's society or environment plays a major role in whether a person would commit crime or not. So he stated that three main factors are responsible for crime. First is physical or geographical, second is anthropological and third is psychological or social. So according to him, criminal behavior is an outcome of variety of factors having a combined effect on, of an, on an individual. So either the geographical area where you are you're staying, your uh, physical aspects, that is your anthropological is your bodily aspects, as well as your psychological aspects, all of these three combined together has an effect on an individual and that plays a major role in whether a person would commit crime or not. He further uh, classified criminals into five main uh, classified classifications. First is born criminals, second is occasional criminals, third is passionate criminals, fourth insane and the last habitual criminals. So he provided an intensive program of crime prevention and recommended a series of measures for treatment of offenders. So according to him punishment could be one of the possible methods of recovery reforming the uh, criminal okay he did not say that punishment alone is needed but he said that punishment also could be a possible method moving on to the next person that is rafael garofalo uh, according to him criminal is a creature of his own creature of his own environment so according to him crime is an act which offends the sentiments of pity which is possessed by an average person and which are injurious to the society. Okay, basically because a person has certain uh, sentiments or certain, uh, they lack in certain emotions because of that, that particular person commits an act which would be injurious to the society. He provided four different types of, uh, different types or different categories of criminals. 
the first he called them as endemic criminals that is murderers people who commit murders uh, he called those type of criminals as endemic criminals second violent criminals who are affected by environmental influences such as prejudice of honor politics and religion so if you look into today's type of crimes honor killings political crimes religious crimes all of those that could be related to violent crimes according to garafello the third is criminals lacking in sentiments of probity or emotion the fourth one is lustful criminals who commit crimes against sex and chastity okay uh, people who are uh, serial rapists or people who commit uh, rapes all of them in today's type of crime could be um, in uh, related to garafello's uh, fourth type of criminals so we've looked into all of the three main proponents of uh, italian school we'll we'll just go through again the major contributions provided by them uh, so mainly this particular school of thought discarded their theories of spirit and free will and they were of the idea that criminality is attributed to anthropological physical and social environment and uh, the criminologist was drawn for the first time towards the individual that is they looked into the individual or the personality of the criminal rather than the act or crime committed by that person okay so the concept of looking into an individual was mainly focused uh, by the school of um, positive school of criminology the protection of society was criminals so, sorry the protection of society from criminals was to be the main primary object which could be achieved by utilizing reformatory methods for different types of criminals in varying degrees okay so they provided the concept of protection of society from the criminals and the concept of using various reformatory methods to various types of criminals in various degrees uh, the positivists also suggested the elimination of only those criminals who did not respond favorably to extra institutional methods okay so basically they try to provide extra institutional methods like probation parole etc uh, that had to be provided to different classes of criminals but people who did not respond favorably to that uh, they had to be however imprisoned that was the uh, major contributions provided by the positivist school uh, i hope the idea of positive school you can relate it to today's causation of crime or uh, today's laws punishment prison systems etc moving on to the uh, uh, next school of thought it's called as radicalism basically this evolved in the 1960s um, it basically provide an conflict ideology that argues that those with the most power in capitalist society make laws and in order to exert control over the lower classes and neutral and neutralize potential power so what uh, according to this school of thought uh, a society has sort of rules and regulations or laws that is mostly made by people who are in power that is the capitalist people the concept of uh, you know working class and bourgeoisie uh, is uh, is the main ideology in radicalism the Marx, marxist school of thought is what helped radicalism in looking at how a crime uh, is defined in a society or how a criminal is made in a society so called according to radicalist it's basically the capitalist or people in power who try to define uh, uh, criminals and they say that mostly lower class people are criminals because those in power try to make laws in according to their uh, happiness or in trying to make laws in according to the uh, interest of the people in power uh, so what happens is any other act that is not in the interest of the people in power that is defined as crime so it's usually the ruling class who who use the label of crime as a way of exerting social control on lower class people 
okay so here the law serves those who have power and to translate their interest into policy this is what i mentioned earlier and uh, they think of law as a set of rules that the state defines and enforces so it is not necessary that whatever the state defines and enforces is in interest in related to the low economic or working class people it is mostly for the people in power and the criminal justice system itself even tries to neutralize or uh, neutralize opposers by targeting the actions of the most oppressed uh, here the concept of uh, opposers as well as people being oppressed so usually what happens according to radicalists the criminal justice system is in favor of people who are opposers or who are in the power or who are in um, who try to exert social control basically the um, people in power the criminal justice system are in favor of them and uh, they try to target the oppressed people and they try to uh, you know neutralize the um, oppression that is being made by the people in power so these are the various schools of thought we looked into how um, crime was seen earlier it was mostly in relation to spirits or in relation to superpower then we looked into how crime was uh, because of free will of an individual uh, who would look into the concept of pleasure and pain then we looked into how a person physical as attributes his environmental attributes his psychological attributes led to crime uh, we also looked into how uh, people uh, the concept of crime and punishment how they were you know seen earlier as well as in present time over the period of time instead of just looking into the concept of uh, crime or the act as such focus started to be more on to the individual if a person is committing the crime what exactly has led that person to commit crime what are the various factors is it just because of one factor or is it a combination of various factors that lead a person to commit crime okay so based upon these um, uh, ideologies other theories of crimes came into being so next class we would look into what are the causation theories of crime so this uh, uh, the historical schools whichever we have looked into they provide a base for the further theories that we are going to look into i hope it was a good session if there are any doubts please do um, take a note of that and in the next session uh, you can ask me doubts related to this thank you so much and i hope it was a helpful class thank you have a great day